That is an electrically charged ring. And we know the electric field due to that, which I've derived before, and I'm not going to do that. So the question is, what is the electric potential with respect to infinity for a charged ring? Two. I'm going to do this two different ways, and it's going to be awesome. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so first, the definition of change in electric potential. Oh, so first, actually, the part that I'm not going to derive, this is the electric field due to a charge ring. So you would find this by integrating, it's not too hard. Um, but if I have a charge ring of radius r and a total charge q, then if I'm along the axis of that ring, the electric field is pointing away from the ring, and the magnitude in the x direction, 1 over 4 pi so not q x over r squared plus x squared plus 2 3 halves. Now, what's the electric potential with respect to infinity? So if I bring a point charge from here, or even nothing, from here to that point, what's the change of potential? Well, let's start with the definition of change of potential. Delta V equals negative the integral from A to B, E dot dr. That's a D, I should be more careful, dr. Okay, now that's terrible. Where does that come from? That's the definition of the chain the, of potential energy. Okay, it's a potential energy per unit charge, and so potential energy is based on a work done by a conservative force. This is a negative sign because you're moving to the other side of the energy equation, but that's where that comes from. So, if I know the electric field and I integrate, so I want to integrate from infinity to some point A, and cal I can calculate the electric potential. So let's do that. I know the expression for the electric field. Uh, I know E dot dr, so I, I can do that. Now, I'll warn you right now, I'm probably going to make a minus sign mistake. I always make a minus sign mistake, and I don't know why. Okay, so let's do this. I'm already thinking about that minus sign right now. I'm going to make a mistake. It's right here where I make the mistake. So definitely it's negative. So if I'm integrating this way from infinity to point A, so it's going to be from infinity to x equals a, then e is that way, and dr is this way in the x direction. So I think there's a negative sign there. So I think I can write this as the negative the integral from infinity to a of negative e x dx. Because my dr is just, I'm gonna, you could pick some crazy path, but why? I'm gonna pick an easy path. This isn't straight in the x direction. Okay, so now I can put this in for my expression and then I can integrate. So let's do that. So delta V is going to be equal to, uh, I have some constants, I have Q, I have 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, I'm going to bring those out front, and this I have a negative and a negative, so it's going to be Q over 4 pi epsilon naught, the integral of x r squared plus x squared, 3 halves dx. Now I need to integrate that. And then you may say, oh my gosh, it's hard. That's actually not a bad interval because, you know, once you do enough integrals, you can see, well, what if I let u equal r squared plus x squared, du equals r is a constant, so I take the derivative of that, it's nothing. Uh, I can take the derivative of x squared and I get 2x dx. And so up here I have x dx, so x dx is du over 2. So now my integral becomes dv equals q over 4 pi epsilon naught. I'm going to leave off the limits of integration because you have to change the limits, and I don't want to do that. Um, so I have a 2 over here, so that's a 1 half. I have du over u to the 3 halves. And that's like u to the minus 3 halves du. And I can integrate that by adding 1 to the power. And I get one, negative 1 half. So now I can switch back to my x. So it's going to be uh, q over 8. Why do I have that half there? That bothers me. I think it's going to be OK. Uh, 8 pi epsilon naught. Oh yeah, okay, that's right. Uh, then I have to multiply by 
So you raise the power, divide, so then I divide by one half. So that, that goes away. But I have a minus sign now. Damn it. Uh, okay. Do I have a minus sign? Okay. So Q over 4 pi epsilon naught, and then du over, that's, it's going to be the integral of u to the negative 1 half, so it's going to be 1 over, I'm going to put u back in, r squared plus x squared to the 3 halves, no, to the 1 half, square root, evaluated at x equals a, x equals infinity. Okay. No, I'm going from infinity to a. I'm making so many mistakes, you, you kind of like, this guy is a loser. Fine, I get it. I made a mistake. Okay, so now I can put it all in. Delta V is negative Q over 4 pi epsilon naught. Now I'm going to put in X equals A, so I get 1 over R squared square root of R squared plus A squared minus 1 over infinity, right, which is going to be 0. So this is going to be 0. And then I have that minus sign there, and I'm mad. Okay, so I think my mistake, I know it has to be a positive potential because it's a positive thing. Um, I think my mistake is right here, and I make this mistake all the time. That should be plus. So let's make that plus. Sorry, but I warned you beforehand that I'd make the mistake. Okay, so there's my change of potential. I'll write it up here. Delta V is Q over 4 pi epsilon naught. 1 over the square root of r squared plus a squared. Uh, so, the, uh, of course, we should check things, right? Check thing number one. Does this have the right units of volts or joules per coulomb? Well, I know that the potential due to a point charge, uh, delta V point, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over r. So it should have charge over distance units. Char and the 4 pi epsilon naught, got that charge, and this is a unit of distance, so it's good. The other thing I should check, if I move very far away from this, I should have a, a zero potential. When That's cheating, because I kind of defined it that way. Because um, I, I said at infinity it's a zero. But if you put, if you let x go to infinity, or a go to infinity, this does go to zero. Okay. Uh, lastly, if a is much larger than r, if a is much larger than r, then this is like 1 over the square root of a squared, or 1 over a, so it looks like this. It looks like a point charge. If you're very far away, it looks like a point charge. Those are all winning things. Doesn't mean you're right, but if you get one of those wrong, you're wrong. Okay, let's do it again. Um, yeah, I don't need that. This expression right here, the electric potential due to a point charge if, is the um, electric potential with respect to infinity due to a single point. And electric potential is like an electric field in that it obeys the superposition principle. That means that if I find the, if I break this into a whole bunch of point charges and find the potential due to each point charge and add it up right here, that would give me the potential. Okay. So what I, that's what I'm going to do. Just like the way we found the electric field due to the ring. So if I take just one piece up here, dq, and I find the potential right there, and then I, I integrate around the circle, I can find the, the total potential. So I'm going to call this dv. It's, I'm using v to represent the potential with respect to infinity. Very common to say that. Okay, And that's the small piece of potential due to the whole ring. It's going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught dq over r. So dq is a charge, that little piece, and r is this distance. Because I'm treat it's a point charge. Okay. So I can't integrate with r and dq, so I want to get r in terms of my other parameters. Well, you see here, I have a right triangle. So r is equal to the square root of r squared plus a squared because it's a hypotenuse. So I can put that in right there. And you may say, oh, we're done. No, we're not done. Just chill. 
r squared plus a squared. Okay, now I need to integrate. Normally I would have to find some parameter over to which to integrate, but you'll notice here, this is a constant, r is a constant, a is a constant. They don't matter, I can pull them out. So I get, I can integrate both sides, and I get uh, v equals one over four pi epsilon naught, one over the square root of r squared plus a squared, the integral d cubed. Well, if I integrate around d cubed over the whole circle, I get cubed. So I get one over four pi epsilon naught cubed over the square root of r squared plus a squared. Ba boom! It's the same thing. We did it two different ways. Okay. It was fun.